Well, hey, everybody. It's Dave coming to you from the front porch of the Southern Maryland house. And um, yeah, you got to be OG to remember one of my front porches. I did this. I used to do them from out here all the time. If it wasn't uh, fire pit weather, if it was raining or whatever, I'd do a front porch vid. So, but ever since I had the paddock, I haven't had to do that. So I've always gone inside the paddock. But I'm home a little bit early. It's probably 5 o'clock Saturday afternoon. It's about 80, 85 degrees out. It's super humid again. Um, I think we got a storm, thunderstorm coming in from the northwest. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, I'm going to spin you around and show you my front yard real quick because I haven't done one of these videos in a while. So here we go. Yeah, since I haven't done a front porch video, I decided to spin you around and show you this. So I'm just sitting literally on my front porch. That's what my front lawn looks like. I got one neighbor, quarter mile or so down there. Last guy on the driveway. Got one guy a couple hundred yards that way. And then that's up towards the main road. And I got a guy about a quarter mile that way. So it's really just the four of us back here. I don't know, it's probably 30 or 40 acres. We, we own six of them. Anyway, haven't shown you the front yard in a while. There's my... Uh, Old Glory hanging proud every day right out front. Anyway, just haven't shown you the front yard in a while. So tonight, we're smoking our second uh, AJ Fernandez. Here it is. The San Latano Requiem. There it is, AJ Fernandez. Tonight's a little bit lighter than last night's. Um, it's my first San Latano. Don't know anything about him. Uh, punched it as always. All right, we'll light it up. Back to you in a minute. All right, she's look good. Draw super nice, just like last night's. Got a little bit of spice on the retro hell, just like yesterday's. a bit lighter you can tell it's not quite that dark Maduro wrap I don't know what kind of wrap this is I know nothing about these guys so I can't do like what Ghost Cobb does I can't do what Uncle Willie does I can't tell you what the uh, filler binder wrapper is and the history of all three pieces and the history of the companies and who bought who and I can do what I always do. My mouth likes it. Thumbs up. Kind of a nice uh, bold minus, mild plus, somewhere in there. Not really mild, and it's not really bold. What the hell am I doing? Medium minus, um, light plus. Anyway. It's definitely somewhere between light and medium. And where it is on that scale is probably up to your mouth as much as mine. But I have to say these AJ Fernandez's, they draw great. They're not wrapped very tight. They burn well. They hold their ash well. Uh, a great product. You know, I'm embarrassed. I'd never heard of them before. So let's see. I got my drink again. Tito's. And uh, Cran Cherry. How about that? Hmm? Pretty manly drink. Tito's and Cran Cherry. So I'm still a bachelor tonight. So I'm going to celebrate my last night of bachelorhood with a video call with my best friend from high school and, and um, first few years of college. Eric's a buddy of mine. He... We grew up together in Everett, Washington. <clears throat> we were best friends in high school. I actually chose to go to Pacific Lutheran University, PLU, because uh, that's because Eric went there. We actually roomed together for three years at PLU. <clears throat> he married his high school sweetheart, Kim. 
They're still married. Got one daughter. She's about 25 or 6 now. Good dude. Literally the smartest person I think I've ever met. I mean, like, intellectually the smartest IQ person I've ever met. He joined Microsoft back in the... We graduated in 86. So he graduated in 86 with me and went pretty much right into Microsoft in, in 86, 87 and stayed there his entire career. Um... They paid him a lot in stock, which I don't think he was very happy at first, but you know, 30 years later, he's pretty happy. He he actually retired before I did. We both struggle with retirement. You know, our jobs are a big part of us. So um, you know, anyway, we commiserate about once a month for an hour on what life's doing and how bored or not bored we are and how our kids are doing. So that's my big party plan for tonight. Uh, Amory and Lauren got down to Sarasota. Great. Perfect timing. Got down around, around noon or 1 o'clock yesterday. They got all moved in yesterday. So today was uh, kind of a beach day for them. Lauren has chosen to work again. So she had a, a work coordination meeting this afternoon. So Amory had an afternoon alone on the beach today. So they're all going out to dinner. Um, my wife's taking out Lauren and her long-term boyfriend, Eamon. I'm sure it'll be a steak dinner knowing them. And then uh, I think Lauren will probably spend the night with Anne Marie again at the hotel. And then uh, take mom to the hotel. I um, God, take mom to the airport. And um, I think she's off the ground at 11.30 or noon. And lands here by three o'clock. So we'll be home by about four, four thirty. And my bachelorhood days will have come to an end. But it'll be good to get her home. So actually one of the things I anticipate tomorrow is a kind of an upset Amory. I'm pretty sure I've told this story before. When she got pregnant with Sean as soon as she was medically confirmed as pregnant with Sean, she quit and uh, never went back to work. So that was 24, 25 years ago. And um, you know, she dedicated her life to our two kids and to me, taking care of me, providing a home for the family. She was very clear with me on our first date that that's all she wanted in life was to be a mom and to take care of her family and make a home. So she was true to her word and to this day has done um, really nothing but take care of Sean and Lauren and me and now her mom and she takes care of the horse farm. And But that causes problems when you're empty nester. So that's what we'll deal with uh, starting tomorrow night is two or three weeks of sort of some depression as she misses her kids. You know, Sean's in Denver and Lauren's gone home after, or Lauren's gone back to school after almost four months with us. So we can't even look forward to Lauren coming home for Thanksgiving. It's too short a break and too hard on her. So she'll come home for almost a month for Christmas, but we won't see her probably for four months. So I got to deal with that. I, I mean, I've dealt with it. It's our fourth year of dealing with that, but it will still be hard on Emory tomorrow night. So it was fun doing the uh, Freedom Friday video today, even though it was Saturday. But, you know, it was fun to show you those originating documents that started this whole world for us and um, how nicely they did it. It took months. I probably ordered those things three months ago. I get the sense they make them only upon order. They're pretty expensive, so I imagine they don't keep a bunch in stock. And it was nice because, you know, I talk a lot of shit about weapons on Freedom Friday videos, and I've shown you a whole bunch, both here and in uh, the Wyoming. And I talk about bump stocks and, you know, take my weapons when you pry them from my cold dead fingers kind of thing. But it was fun today to talk about some non-lethal options too, and maybe some more, more uh, some options that are more legal for some of you to own. In the comments sections, it came 
came to my attention that I still owe you guys. I'm not, I've got one big hole that I've not filled in uh, Freedom Friday. So I think next Friday I'm going to do a night vision. I've got a real nice uh, uh, Marine Corps sniper night vision gear. Um, I got to get it out and get it set up and get it on the helmet and all that for you. But we'll talk about night vision, uh, I think, next Friday. I should warn you, too, we've come to the end of the tobacco section of the of the briefing. So uh, I'll show this again. See how nicely it's holding its ash. Smokes great. Officially, this ends the tobacco portion of this uh, video. So I always try to come across as prepared and knowledgeable and smart. And I got to tell you some uh, dumb shit move today. So I set my wallet and my reading glasses on the floor on the back seat of my truck and left it there. And as I drove around, the wallet and the glasses slid into the door pocket and um i just found him it took me a couple hours of looking man i looked everywhere for those stupid things just for me being stupid and putting that wall out where it didn't belong and then for some reason leaving it there you know luckily i found it no issues but boy that was a pretty frustrating couple hours so i just want to come clean and tell you you know i do a lot of stupid shit and there's just one example from earlier today so I got confirmation from Slow Mo Randy that he got Ghost Cobb's birthday box. So it's officially to him. I believe he's the last one, and it now goes back to Ghost Cobb. So, you know, Sean, if you're listening, if you watch this at all, it's it's with Randy and uh, should be to you pretty soon. It's just nice to be have that burden of responsibility off of my shoulders. So I smoked two more bowls of Sun Bear Black Locust today. I got to tell you, each bowl gets better, in my opinion. Sasha doesn't like that she is she kind of see the dogs right there. They don't like that they can see us and not be part of us. Anyway, I have to say the black locust, it's a, it's a deep, robust, rich, slightly sweeter tobacco. But once your palate gets used to it, I think I've smoked five bowls yesterday so i rubbed out my two bowls today but i done uh four bowls rubbed out one bowl of folded stuff and i have to say the more i smoke it the better it is so i also heard today that uh pipes and cigars i think has still has it so one of the majors still has it as of today which i didn't i didn't realize that's really good so you might be able to jump on and grab some tonight I also didn't find that at it that expensive. I think it was fourteen dollars a ten. So anyway, just reiterating what I said yesterday, it's um, I find it to be a great blend, and I really enjoy it. My mouth enjoys it. Um, anyway, so hopefully I'm not telling you something that's not true, and it's become unobtainium in the last six hours. But if you can afford the fourteen dollars. You know, jump on and grab yourself a tin or two. So I meant to show you this last night too. Look how well, this thing holds its ash really well. It's a really well constructed cigar. So I guess, although I've never heard of AJ Fernandez, I have to say it uh, seems to be a really high class cigar, or at least well constructed. And we definitely got thunder and lightning coming in. So I don't know if you guys watch Piper Can, but if you don't, you should. And if you don't want to subscribe, at least watch his video from today. Um, I still think he's one of the hardest working guys in the YTPC and he's got a full-time job at the state of West Virginia and he just got promoted to a director level. He's got several million dollars he's responsible for. And then he works all day Saturday and Sunday delivering for Coke. That's pretty amazing. But the reason I'm bringing it up is today he talks about his VR to Michigan Piper. And then in that VR, one of the questions asked is, what is the project you're working on? And he gave a great, like, 15-minute conversation about his physical health. And that's the project he stated. So if you haven't watched it, go watch it. If you don't know who he is, Piper can go look him up and um, at least watch today's video. He only puts up videos on Saturday and Sundays. He's part of my, he's one of the guys, as soon as I see his video post, I try to watch him. 
So it's not a Saturday till I've seen Ken. It's not a Sunday until I've seen Ken. Um, I respect the guy immensely. And um, anyway, just try to reach out and um, watch this video from today. Hey, guys, a rough topic. Um, buying shit you don't need. A better way to say it would be preserve your cash, preserve your capital. And I think we're heading into a pretty rough patch these next next year or two. As we go through the election, there's a good chance Kamala will be our president. Um, and she's started to talk some weird shit. So, um, it, and it, this is a multiple part topic. Okay, so... If you already own own a few guns, don't buy any more just like the ones you have. If you have a bunch of pipes, stop buying pipes for a while. If you have a great seller of tobacco, stop buying tobacco. If you have cigars laid back, stop buying cigars. The pot calling the kettle black. I get it. But <clears throat> But I've done, I have stopped pretty much. I don't buy pipes. Um, I haven't bought many cigars. Um, I kind of just smoke what I've got for a while. If I get a box of unobtainium from my buddy out in Wyoming, I'll buy those. But, um, but I'm actually selling. And that's the second part of the conversation. If you have toys or things that you don't need, if you have an RV you don't use and you think about selling it, you better sell it now. Um, Scott, you did that great video about uh, Harley Davidson. If you're thinking about selling you Harley, do it now. I mean tomorrow. Get it listed because these toy assets are going to crash. They already are. If you're paying attention at all to the car market, the car inventories have exploded in the last year and super exploded in the last three or four months. Some of these dealers have gone from having 30-day supply to having three- and four-year supply. The car market is in free fall. Which could be helpful if you absolutely have to buy a vehicle over the next year. But if you own cars that you think about getting rid of, sell them now. I am personally putting three cars of mine on the market next Tuesday. And as soon as those are gone, I've got another three selected. So I'm going to start rolling out of my some of my toy assets. Um, beware of your capital, guys. Don't spend it stupidly. The question that I try to ask is when I purchase something with real hard cash, is it going to make me money? Right? And that's why... You know, we've talked about in prior videos about real estate, land, gold, silver that you actually own. Um, I have a pretty wide wingspan in the world, and most of the people I know who are of true means, I mean super wealthy, they're getting out. They're selling their crypto. They're selling their stocks. They're selling their toys. They're getting out, and they're going to cash. I mean, that's what we call it, right? Go to cash. And... Um, this worries me that so many people of means, and, and people I don't know who are being public about it are doing it as well. Warren Buffett has pulled almost everything to cash. He owns very little except the companies he owns and cash. I think he's got some crazy number, like $230 billion in cash in Berkshire Hathaway. He has sold half his Apple holdings. He's sold a lot of his American Express. Um, he only owns about four or five stocks. He prefers to own companies. But he's pulling the cash. Elon Musk is pulling the cash. He's selling, he's selling stock, you know, in companies that made him what he is today. He's selling it. So the people who know what's going on in the world are getting rid of toys, pulling the cash, selling their uh, sketchier investments, and pulling the cash. We should do the same thing. So again, if you have a toy you want to sell, sell it now. RV, motorcycle, second, third car, whatever it is, get rid of it now. If you have a pipe collection you want to sell, sell it now. Um, 
You know, I just think the uh, strata of people who will be able to afford t to purchase such toys is going to crater over the next year or two. It may not even be that long. So just beware. Sounds preachy, but God, I would really feel like a piece of shit if I'm doing it. And I'm not telling you I'm doing it and telling you why. So I guess maybe the last piece of this is uh, interest rates. So there are short-term interest rates, you know, the six-month, nine-month, year, two-year, and then there's the 10-year, 20-year, 30-year. <clears throat> the longer-term interest rates, everybody that I talk to is expecting them to go up. And so <clears throat> if you're talking about if you need to refinance the long-term debt, you know, do it now, like next couple of weeks, like next week. Um, you know, we have the Jackson Hole Symposium this next week. There'll be some announcements coming out of that that could impact interest rates. Um, if you're trying to do a debt consolidation loan, you're putting a bunch of short-term debt together into one long-term loan, you need to do that now. If you're looking to buy a piece of property or a house now and keep it for a while, and you can use a 30-year mortgage to do it and get on it. Interest rates on and, and that longer term, I believe, are only going up. Now, I could be wrong. We could turn New Year's or 4th of July and uh, not be true. But everyone I talk to and all the, all the indicators show that interest rates are going to go up again. So just if you need to use debt, hopefully to purchase an asset, get on it. A lot of people don't realize that <clears throat> the interest rate truly impacts what you can afford. You know, somebody could buy a four hundred thousand dollar piece of ground at six percent interest can no longer afford that at nine percent, right? And a debt consolidation loan at six percent allows you to pay off principal much faster than if you have a nine or ten percent interest rate. And I think that's what we're facing over the next twelve months. So. You know, I'm not saying do it tomorrow. Uh, well, tomorrow's Sunday. You can't do shit on Sunday. But <clears throat> if you're close to making some decisions and you're holding off, just be aware of the interest rates. It truly impacts how much of your money goes to paying what you want, paying for what you want, or paying off what you owe. It can really hurt. And I don't want any of you to get hurt. That's the only reason I keep harping on this crap. Guys, yeah, this is a great time to make money. <clears throat> make money and stow it away or make money and pay off debt. I don't mean to pick on anyone in particular, but some examples are Jim, stop working on your own guns. Tell twenty tell the twenty gun stores closest to you. Tell the twenty gun ranges closest to you that you'll take on any gun repair they've got that they can't handle. By the end of the year, you'll be making more money with the guns as a gunsmith than you will through Social Security. It will change your life. You know, um, Mark, uh, well, she Piper. You know, tell your company you'll take on every driving shift. Every time somebody uh, calls in sick, you'll take their shift. <clears throat> yeah, you probably don't want to work 180 or 200 days in a row. You probably don't want to pull doubles, but it will change your life. Uh, Scott, who's a marshal? I mean, take on those private security details that they always want cops to take on. Anyway, I don't mean to pick on anybody. I'm just trying to give examples, and you three come to mind the most. Mark, you talked about what you should treat your wife with. And um, if it were my wife, what I'd want to do is add up all the money she's paid for you over the last 14 weeks. It sounds like there's some more that she that you bought, too. And, and give her all her money back, right? I don't know her at all. I don't know your relationship at all. But I know in my world, that would excite those people. If they loaned you three or four or five or $10,000 over the you know, three, four months you haven't worked, and you say, I've added it all up. Here's the number <clears throat> I've saved up over the last month, and here's all the money back to you. That's probably better than any bobble or dinner you could provide her. Hey guys, I actually looked up the five states that don't accept or doubt it's illegal to ship tobacco to them anymore. 
So it's already five. Maine, Utah, South Dakota, Hawaii, and Washington. So the five states that none of the big companies will ship to any longer. And I believe it's actually illegal. Like even if I were to send you one of mine, it's illegal for me to ship it to you. And the United States USPS Postal Service has asked, start asking when when I put one of those states down, are you you know, is there any tobacco in this package? So becoming uh becoming harder and harder and I think more and more states are gonna go down that road. Anyway, I just said yesterday there's five or seven, it's five and those are the five. So I just wanted to be factual on that. Alright you guys, well I'm down to my roast clip for my cigar and uh my drink is getting low. That tells me it's time for me to shut up, end this video, and upload it. So, so let's go ahead and do that. I enjoy these a lot, guys. I miss them when I'm not doing it. I miss the conversation with you guys. So hopefully these land. Hopefully they're not so long that nobody gets anything from them. But I enjoy making them. So let's just end it. Um, so may God bless you. May God Turn his ear to your prayer. And that means you're making you're, you're making an effort, right? You're actually praying to the man. May he turn his ear towards your prayer. May he make his face shine upon you. And may he bless your life as well as he has blessed and continues to bless mine. With that, guys, we'll be done. I hope you guys had a great Saturday. I hope you have a good Sunday coming at you tomorrow. And I hope you have a planned, good week in front of you. If you don't, get a plan in place for the week. That's it. We'll talk to you tomorrow on Sunday. Bye, everybody.